please uh, don't let that from uh, allowing you to, or from you asking questions or chiming in or something. If I, I know that we've scheduled in a half an hour, so I'm gonna try and go through a lot of uh, the details here. But uh, if you do have a question, if I am flying by something, too quick just ask me to rewind ask me to stop ask me to pause and we'll go back on that so this is our first uh, webinar webinar this is new to google classroom it's going to be a beginner level session on google classroom um, as i mentioned to other people it is being streamed i'll post this back into the message the chat window there if you don't want to uh participate here on this end and you just want to watch the live stream of it it's being streamed on the other end um so you can just you can jump out of this one, I won't, no hard feelings, and jump into that one. Or you can stay here, mute your mic, mute your camera so you don't accidentally show up on the screen, and we'll go from there, so. Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna jump right into this, uh, right off the bat. Um, in this session, I'm gonna try and go through how to set up a classroom. Um, for those of you who have provision classes, those are classes that we created earlier in the year based off PowerSchool, and you never decline them. Uh, how to just accept those and get them in there. Um, how to get your students in. So if you create your own class, how you can get your kids into there, what's the best way to do that? How you can remove a student from your class and how you can prevent them from coming back in. So we're gonna look at some of the settings around Google Classroom to make sure it's set up as secure. And then uh, a little bit on guardian summaries. So we'll take a look at the guardian summaries to see what we can do. And then we're gonna get into the actual classroom part, which is you know how to organize your classroom, what can you do in there? And then some of the ideas behind integrations with some of the other pieces. I don't know that we'll necessarily get into all the integrations. Uh, I don't know, Lydia, so I'm going to say no. Um, I don't know we're gonna to get too deep into all of the integrations but uh we'll i'll give you a quick heads up on on what those are so all right so just to be uh sure everything that we're going to do today is going to be based off the classroom um website so that is classroom.google.com uh if you go into the waffle you'll be able to find it from there as well i'm going to present my screen now so that you guys can see what we're talking about here And we'll get going. So classroom.google.com or in the waffle, waffles up here under your Google apps and then identify your classroom app where it is. So inside of here, um, we have the option to create a class or join a class using the plus. Your students are gonna see a very, very similar page. Um, for those of you who have never been to Google Classroom, it is going to ask you right off the bat if you are a student or a teacher. You will need to be signed into your Google account to make use of this. And it has to be your Palace or Google account. So parents aren't allowed in here. We'll get to that later. Um, if you're trying to access it from a personal Gmail, you're not going to see this either. So when, you, when it asks you if you're a teacher or a student, we get a lot of... Uh, Teachers oppress students because they're not too sure they're in a class like this, or we get a lot of students oppress teachers because they think it'll give them some additional functionality. All it actually does is it creates a, uh, a list on our end that we get to approve or deny. And until you're an approved teacher, you're only able to join a class, you're not able to create a class. So we're going to jump in and we're going to create a class. There is only one requirement with a created class, and that's the name of the class. Nothing else is required inside of here, although it does help when you need some help with your Google Classroom if you have some additional information on there. So if our class is math and you just put math, um, it, it makes it difficult for me to identify that class later on. And it makes it difficult for me to come in and help you with that. Um, it is helpful if you put in a little bit more information and maybe even a year, 2019, 2020. 
subject and room i'm not super concerned about but if there is something uh really specific you can put that in there and then we're going to press create okay that simple if you have a provision class what a provision class is is a class that we've created for you based on your power school enrollments um, so if you have one of those you're going to see a very similar tile like this but it's going to say accept or decline that class right now is sort of in limbo there's nothing, uh, there's nobody in it yet. There is nobody, no students or no teachers assigned to that class until you hit accept. So once you hit, hit accept, it's gonna bring you in and then it's gonna take a look and bring all of your students into that classroom as well. So if you do have any of those that you wanna use, you can accept or decline them. All right, just gonna have a quick pause here. Gonna go take a look at the chat window. Is there any questions based on what we've seen already uh, with regards to um, creating a classroom? All right, we're gonna keep moving along here then. Uh, one of the questions that I ask, and if you'll notice here, you'll see that I actually have two, well, I have three demo classes. This is one that I use all the time. So there's tons of stuff going on in there. We're gonna stay out of that for a second, but you'll see that I have two. I have a subject level or a subject demo class and I have a general demo class. The way I like to think of these ones is these are the classes, um, the general demo class I would say is for our elementaries. Okay, so in those cases, how many classrooms do you need for our elementary students or our generalist teachers who are teaching students more than one subject? I think that you only need one class. I think that we can use topics once we get inside of that class. And I think only having one class is gonna make it easier for our students. They only need to go to one place and then they're able to filter and get beyond there. So an example of that, if we get into our demo class is you can see I have a whole bunch of topics on the side so I can sort down by that topic and just show pieces that are related to to that topic and not to other ones so in my gen, general demo class I've already created a couple topics for our students to see I created video meetings numeracy and literacy I'll show you how to create some topics in a bit, but essentially we're going to bring our kids into there. And then when we want them to do something with literacy, we're going to get them to click on literacy and they will only see the literacy um, items that we've given to them. So it's an easy way for us to filter and move through there. As opposed to our subject demo class. So this one I would say is more for our middle school and high school teachers where we're teaching subjects and we're teaching multiple classes of the same subject. So I wouldn't put all of my grade eight math kids into one class because it's gonna be a really, really big class, okay? So sometimes we wanna differentiate it in a bit of a different manner where we only have certain groups in there. So this one, I use the, the grade nine math outcomes. I have all my outcomes down the side. These are my general outcomes or my themes in there. And now I can start to use it just like I would units. So I'm gonna to start to separate these students on units, uh, but again, it gives me the ability to organize items inside of these topics. And it lets me to work with my individually inside of my classrooms without having to overlap with other classrooms. So. All right. Um, I keep coming back to this idea of organizational and organizing and topics. Topics are the most important thing, I think. This is the biggest thing that you wanna pay attention to inside of Google Classroom. I have in this one, I'm gonna jump back to my elementary one here and I have three topics that I've created. I've created one for video meetings. I have a static link in here. That means I have a link that my kids can always come to and connect with the video meeting for my class. I've tried to put a little note in here. I, I should actually edit this to have a better description. But I would say connect with this uh, event five minutes before the event starts and it will close five minutes after. That's not entirely true. Okay, It doesn't close until you're the last one in that classroom. But 
what I've done is I've created a material at the top of the list that the students can come, take a look, see what's there, click on it and get into my meeting right away. There was just an announcement from Google today that they are actually creating a our classroom meet. So they're gonna add a little button up here. This is in the classwork tab. They're gonna add a little button that's just on this side of Google Calendar and it will say uh, classroom meet or meet. And by clicking that, you'll get into a meet, a, a Hangouts meet that is only for the people that are in this class. So only you as a teacher and the students that are enrolled in your class will be able to get in there. This hasn't rolled out to our domain yet, or I haven't seen it yet, but we're expecting to see something like that in there to control video conferencing a little bit more and make it a little bit more secure for our classes. Until that comes, I would suggest that you create a video meeting tab of some type with one link in there that the kids can join in on. Okay. I'm going to move down a little bit further. I have two other topics that I've created. And one of the things I want to make note of is we can reorganize these topics. So we can move the topics up or down depending on what we're working on. So if I know we're going to do a bunch of literacy work today, I'm going to move literacy a little bit higher in my list. It's a simple drag and drop. And that's going to update on my student end as well. So it's going to make it a little bit easier for them to see. Here's an example of my demo class where I have a bunch of items up top that are not within a topic. So all of these items, when I created them, I didn't assign them to a topic. They automatically go to the very top of your classwork page. I can try and move them, but I cannot move them. They're in um, ascending chronological order. So oldest ones on top, newest ones on the bottom, and I can't move them around. I can't change that order. When I get down into one of my topics, again, we have the items in there that are assigned to this topic, but I can take this one right here, posted December 20th, 2018, and I can move that to the top. So I can rearrange items that I've placed in there based on what I think is the best order for our kids to interact with it. Moving things up and down as we seem fit. This is not possible unless items are in the topics. So in this case right here, this is a material. You see there's a slightly different icon. We'll talk about that in a second. But maybe I want this at the very top all the time. So I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to have my assignments down below. All right, I've been away from the chat for a little bit here. I will absolutely show you how to add some links into the materials. I'm going to show you how to do this. How can we record this meeting? Shakila, you can't, I can. not so I've recorded this meeting and uh, I will make this available to you afterwards. So the interesting thing, and I know this is slightly off topic here, but um, if you organize a meeting through a schedule, uh, through your calendar, regardless of who records that, it will come into the organizer's Google Drive. So no matter what, doesn't matter who started this recording, it's gonna come into my Google Drive and I get the ability to share it out after the fact, so. All right, now that we have our class a little bit set up, we've created it, we're gonna jump into the People tab and I'm gonna show you how we can add some people in here. So way number one is with the join code, okay, or the class code. Every class has a distinct class code. You can share this with your students and they can go just like you on classroom.google.com. They can click, click on the plus and they can join a class with that code and enter the code there, okay? The only problem with that is you do not have the ability to differentiate which students came in and which students didn't come in. So you can ask them to go, but you can't necessarily demand that they go. And there could be a student from a different class in there. 
So an easier way sometimes to do it is to invite your students. If you don't have provision classes, those ones we loaded kids up in before, and some of them may be missing, you can invite your students by clicking this and then entering their emails. You can copy all the emails from PowerSchool and dump them in here in a big list, and then just click invite down below. And it'll invite those students into the classroom and make it easy. Students that don't get in, or maybe they declined it, you can share the invite code with them. I'm going to pop up to the top right corner to the settings icon. And down here, you'll see here is also our class code. Once we know that all of our students are in the class, and again, for some of our little learners, this isn't going to be such an issue, but some of our older students who may share this with their friends, we can click on the drop down and we can disable our class code. What that will do is the class code no longer works. So sharing that with somebody won't get them into the class. The other thing that you can do if you don't want to go that drastic, maybe you say, well, I still need a class code because I still need some kids to get in here, but I want to stop other kids from getting in, is you can just reset the class code. So every time you reset the class code, it's going to come up with a new one. You can share that one out and the old ones will no longer work. Okay. Sliding down into these general uh, settings, the next one I would change is this stream. So inside the stream, that's the front page for Google Classroom. Anything that goes on, any of the announcements that you make, any of the assignments that you post are all going to show up there. Unless you change that, students can post and comment in the screen in the stream. That's the default setting. So maybe you want to change that to only students can comment. So when you put an announcement, if a student has a question, they can do that. Or maybe you want to say in the stream, only I can. You don't want to let them post or comment on there. Your decision, you know your kids better than me. You know the best way to do things. So I would say starting with this one and then moving on from there. The rest of them aren't really that important to start uh, monkeying around with. Uh, condensed notifications and deleted items. I would say you want to leave this off because generally when we delete an item, we made a mistake, we don't need it to show up. The last one down here is our guardian summaries. This one I'm going to suggest that you leave on. Your guardian summaries is the only way that your parents can interact with your classroom. That means that they get an invitation I'm going to jump to a classroom where I think I have some parent information in here. Oh, no. I have a bunch of students in here, but you would invite the guardians. If the guardian has already been invited to another classroom, it could be in a, by a different teacher. It could have been in a previous year. Their information should already be in here and they would be invited. Now, the guardian gets an email that says, I want to be a part of the classroom or do you want to get guardian summaries? And they get to choose either daily or weekly summaries from you that say what assignments for their student are missing, um, what assignments are coming up that are due, and what assignments have just been posted in this past week or what materials have just been posted in this past week. So this is a great way to, you know, without doing much work, keeping your students connected to the classroom and keeping, sorry, keeping your guardians connected to the classroom. I'm just gonna pop back to the meet and see if there's any questions here. No new questions, so we're gonna keep moving along. Okay, so we've got our classroom set up. We've got our parents invited maybe. We've got our students in there. Um, one thing, sorry, one thing that I forgot to show you, I'll go into my demo class and people. If you have a student and you say, hey, this student's not supposed to be in here, they must have, somebody must have shared the code with them. If you click the button beside them, it gives you the ability to access all of these actions. So you can email that student specifically, you can remove them or you can mute them. If you mute them, this is for students that are maybe talking too much. They can still submit their work. 
nobody else will see it. They are not allowed to reply to any other student work that you've made available, so any of the questions or anything, and they are not allowed to post or comment. So we can mute that student as step number one. If that student doesn't follow along, see the little icon indicating that? If that student doesn't follow along and they're still being troublesome, we'll actually go to virtual student two on that one, and we'll say, you didn't listen the first time, we can remove them from our class. And if we remove them from our class, it asks for that. We don't lose any of their materials. So any assignments they've submitted already are staying with us, but we're able to send them on their way. Okay. All right, so now that we have that, we have everything all set up. We've talked about controlling our students. We've talked about some of the settings that we can do. Now it's time to uh, create, I'll show you how to create your topics. There are two places to create um, items in here. Number one is the stream, and we'll get to that in a second. That's only used for announcements. I don't find a ton of usage in there, but maybe you will. The other one is under the classwork page. So by going to the classwork page and pressing create, we get the options to create all these different types of items. There are other places that we can create topics, but assignments, quiz assignments, questions, materials, and reusing a post from somewhere else all needs to be done through this menu. So let's go through really quickly. Our assignments are things that we want to assign to our students. Easy as that. Our quiz assignments are Google Forms. And what it will do is automatically create a Google Form for us that then we can start to fill out and put in the details. I actually prefer to create the forms myself and then assign them as an assignment. But this is another way that you can go in there and you can do that. Questions are questions that you send out to your students. So this is a great opportunity to create a discussion forum with your kids. You're gonna give them the question, you're gonna ask that to them, and then you can see which kids have responded. You can also turn it on so students can respond to other students' responses. So you can make a forum in there where students are responding and discussing what other kids think about certain topics. Materials are static links. So this is where I posted that Hangout Meet uh, the, the link to that, this is where I posted that. If you have a rubric that's in, let's say, a Google Doc that you know you always use, maybe you want to part, um, post that in the assessment piece and say, create a topic for assessment, and then say to your students, this is the rubric that you will always be graded upon. That's a great way just to have it there. Or maybe you have the course outline that you want to make sure what they're seeing. And finally, reuse posts. Reuse post allows you to take an assignment, a question, or a material from any other class that you are a part of, either active classes or archive classes, and reuse those. So I'm going to jump up to assignment because this is the most exciting one. We're going to give this a title. This is our first assignment. I would argue that your title should be short but perhaps you want a little bit more in the description. The students are gonna see both of these. Um, generally with our assignments, we see, we have that written on the page, what we want them to do, copy and paste it into here and just tell the kids, I want you to you know, complete this sheet or use this sentence starter to finish this or whatever it is. And we're gonna put those informations in the instructions. Down below, we have two options. We have add and create. These are the exact same options that your students have on their end when they go to complete an assignment. So I'm gonna to go to add, and it's gonna say, what do you wanna add? This is a YouTube link, so it's gonna give me a pop-up bo um, box for me to search YouTube. I actually prefer to work within YouTube and then just grab the link and bring it over and post it as a link. If you have an external file or a file um, that is on a USB drive or something you wanna upload, you can do that as well. Primarily, I'm gonna say we're probably gonna have most of our work in our Google Drive. So we're gonna jump into Google Drive. We're gonna find a file that we want to allow. For me, I'm gonna use this, this is a Google slide. I'm gonna bring that in there and we're gonna attach it. Now, you can attach multiple files into here. So if I also wanted to put a YouTube link for the kids to watch, or I had a PDF that I wanted them to read, you can put all of those pieces in there. 
So see over on the right hand side here, there's a drop down box. This drop down box, whenever you attach a file, needs to be done the first time you create the assignment. So if you store the assignment and you don't post it right now, you don't post it till later, you're going to need to delete that attachment and start again. Or you won't get the options to students can view, students can edit, or make a copy for each student. This is the one that most people do because essentially what it does is it takes your file and as a template, it creates a copy for each student. It assigns their name behind it so you can see all of their work. So right off the bat, you've given them the template that you want to work. You know the formatting, you know everything that's going on, and you've made a copy for each of them. So they can't say that they don't have that copy because digitally it's here. They are the owner once you assign it, and you have the ability to view, edit, or make suggestions, okay? That's important. Once you assign it, they are the owner, something happens later on where we're gonna change that. Now, right here, under the four in the right-hand menu, this is the classes you want to assign them to. So if we want to assign this same assignment to more than one class, we can do that, okay? It's important if you do that, that you check your student list, okay? Because by default, it goes to all students, but we have the ability to differentiate. So if you have an assignment that you give to a certain group and not to a different group based on their abilities, you can assign that to some and not to others. The students will only see the assignments that are assigned to them. They won't see this assignment, but it's grayed out and they can't touch it. They will only see the ones that are assigned to them. So you can differentiate without that social uh, social piece where they're seeing what they do or don't get. Points is just that points. We're not going to worry about points so much. We can talk about grading at a later date. This here, the due date is extremely important. If you want it to show up in a guardian summary, you need to make sure that you put a due date on there. Otherwise, there is no due date. It won't show up. And then finally, down here, we have our topic. Again, we went through why we want to use topics. This is where you can either select a topic or if you don't have any ones in there, this is also another place where you can create a topic. So we can say, this is for assessment purposes. There's the option down here to do rubrics and originality report. We're gonna spend time on another webinar talking about those. Okay. Up at the top, you'll see the assign button. If you click that drop down, you have three options. You can save it and come back to it later. You can schedule it. So Friday night when you're doing all your planning for the next week or Sunday night, you say, I know that this is going to go out on Wednesday or I know this is going to go out on Thursday. We can schedule that to be released at a certain um, date and at a certain time. So I know I don't see my kids till 12 o'clock. I'm gonna address this with them at 12. I want this assignment to go out at one because I know I need to talk to them before it goes out. So we can say, we wanna assign it on the 15th at 1 p.m. and schedule that. And it'll hang out in limbo until it's ready. You see it's scheduled. It'll tell us right here that it's scheduled at what time. If we made a mistake, we can go back and we can edit that but essentially you've done that. So coming back to the question, how did I create that link? We're gonna create a material and I'm gonna say conference link. I'm gonna to go to my calendar and here's my join Hangouts Meet. I'm gonna copy that, go back into here. I would put some description in here, you know, join this meeting, oops, join this meet five minutes before class. I'm gonna add that link into there. And I'm gonna put it in the same one I did before. This is for assessment purposes. And we're gonna post that right off the bat. So here we go, we created a new topic. So it went to the very top of the list. I could move that down if I want. I could move one of these up. I have one that's posted. You can see the icon is a little bookmark and I have down below an assignment that is still in the queue waiting to go. So it's all there. 
So a half an hour went a little quicker than I thought. Um, I want to jump down because there's an important piece that I need you to know, which is when you assign an item, I told you that the student is the owner and the teacher has the ability to edit, comment, or make suggestions. When they turn it in, this is why it's important for them to turn that item in. You become the owner of that. So you become the owner and they only get view only rights. They have the ability to unsubmit that assignment and pull it back and you get notification on that. Okay. And then they can turn it in again. If it's late, you will get notification that it's turned in late. When you're all done and you've marked it, I strongly suggest that you return the assignments to them. If you give them a grade, they'll get a report on that grade, but it also takes the ownership of that assignment and turns it back to the student. So the student becomes the owner. You still get the ability to view, edit, and make suggestions, not that you would after you've assigned it, but you can turn it back to them. They have that ownership. If they make edits and wanna turn it in again, they can absolutely do that, right? Again, it's late based on what you want to do in your class, um, but they have the ability. So it does have to do with the ownership of that assignment. So, so I'm going to stop sharing my window one more time here and you'll see me. I'm going to check the chat menu and see if we kind of hit some of the pieces here. Uh, do you have a parent presentation on how to upload assignments to the classroom? Most are posting on the homeroom page and I can't move their assignment over to the grade and send feedback. Um, so what I would suggest there is work with your families. I don't have a presentation. I can, we can, uh, I could work with you to put something together, Stacy. but essentially you're going to want to go into those settings and you're going to want to turn off the ability for, uh, students to post or comment on that front page. Okay. So if you remember, we'll jump back in one more time. Yeah, right in here. Perfect. I see that you mentioned that you just did, but one more time, just turning off that ability so only teachers can, making sure you save that. Okay, so now you've taken away their ability to do that. So now they know that they have to go to that, that assignment and they're going to need to put something in there. So. um adding google meet to the classroom material was a super idea thank you i you know what i'm super excited on when they get this classroom meet into there because i think that that is actually going to be the game changer because that adds that additional level of security that we have that we're looking for with google meet um i feel pretty confident now but there has been some rumors about well not rumors there has been some students that have been doing some nefarious things in there uh in google meets jumping into others um this is going to add that extra level of security. Don't think it's an issue with our elementaries, but maybe with our middle school, high school. So guys, I am three minutes over. I am willing to stay online uh, and, and answer any questions that you may have. But thank you for your time. Um, we'll hopefully come up with a level two on this because there's a whole bunch of stuff that we missed. I'm going to share with you a presentation that I put together on a lot of this stuff uh, based on here with some links to some additional pieces in there. So that'll be coming out. Also, anything or the recording here is going to be posted uh, on the, sorry, I guess I should, I'm kind of fumbling through this. In Google Meet, when you record a lesson, if it's organized through a calendar event, the recording and a transcript of the chat window automatically goes into that calendar event. So you guys should see something in the calendar event shortly here, uh, but I will also share out the, uh, I'll make it available. I, will, I don't know that I'll share it out, but I will make the recording of this available if you wanna look again, so. So at this point, I am going to stop the recording and uh, I'll stick around and answer your questions. <laughs>